Hello again, I'm Gamma Rays, and I've been a dungeon master since the day I was born. In this video, I'll be guiding you into what to focus on when your players finally reach Ever. We'll be focusing on Danivar's house, the Moon Gleam Tower, the Harpers, and Crow and Valhara. So, let's get on with this. Your players finally land on solid ground after 10 to 12 days of traveling through the skies on Zephyros' tower. And in front of them, they can see the rising walls of Ever just a day or so away. Zephyros won't be dropping them at the gates directly because he is a cloud giant and cloud giants have been attacked several different settlements in this point in the story. So he would drop them off a little farther away so as they don't get any aggression. As your players walk towards Everland, there is no need for any encounters here because we want to progress the story, don't we? At the end of the day, the party reaches the gates of Everland. And after being questioned by the guards on where they came from and what they want to do here, your players will enter the city and subsequently head to Danvar's house. You don't have to have the guards ask them any questions. It's in case you want to have Everland in like a lockdown mode. Just in case. So, just to be clear, Everland is a large city. It is extremely interesting and has a very deep and rich lore, which could allow any DM to fashion many different adventures in this city alone. But that's what we are trying to avoid because we are explicitly running Storm King's Thunder. And as of reaching Everland right now, your players still do not have a plot hook in place. They don't have a proper goal to work to. But that being said, we need to flesh out the city just a little. Everland is a city that has a river running through it, with many ships and barges docking at its ports to bring its bountiful harvest to other cities of the Silver Marches. Or marshes, I'm not entirely sure. As such, it has two giant bridges that allow pedestrians to cross so they can get from one half of the city to the other. So here's what we need to flesh this place out. We need the bell market, the docks, the ships, with imports from other cities, armories and smithies, inns and taverns, and last but not least, the absolute most important part of Everland, the Moon Gleam Town. To start off, the Bell Market is situated in an open field from which the citizens of Everland can buy their groceries, toys, clothes, trinkets, and general items, so on and so forth. You can have many different stalls here that sell interesting thingamabobs from around the area. The docks and ships are really one point. You can have ships here that have brought in some special items from other cities nearby. Use this to mainly sell the idea of items from Silvery Moon being magic and if the players are interested well they can head north to see where they make all these amazing items in person just tease them with magic items that aren't really powerful and tell them that many more powerful items and the likes can be found at Arkans invocatorium and the dragonfall mark armories and smithies are a must so players can stock up an ammo and maybe get that plate armor that they've been hoarding to for ends your players are most likely going to be heading towards danivar's place first and foremost. So make it as fun as you can with the music troupe, special drinks and food, very cheerful outlook and you can even sprinkle sprinkle in some more harsh nag rumors about him being seen headed to the north. There's a chance for you as a DM to use a lot of different NPCs here and uh, just have fun and roll with the blows of whatever comes. Now, Moongleam Tower is one of the most important parts of this adventure. It is a large and high tower that sits atop a hill on the northern side of the city. It is made entirely of black stone and has a gleaming crescent crescent moon on top. Anyone who walks the streets of Everland can see this tower no matter where they are. It is the Harper's main base of operations and it is manned by many of them. Coincidentally, that's where your players will finally get an actual goal to try and achieve via missions from Crow and Valharo, the Archmage that resides within the tower. Because of course, an Archmage lives in a tower. You can work on a few descriptors for these key locations and you'll be fine and dandy. Anyways, back to the story. When the players ask for Dral Thelep, he'll walk up to them and they should give him the badge they received from Darathra back in Tribal. He'll pocket the thing, tell them to follow him with a gentle smile. The players will most likely do so and he leads them up to the third floor where he greets them into his own personal guest room and prompts them to sit. I must say, Darathra hasn't sent people to me in quite some time. This is almost the first, <laughs> Dral says as he begins pouring the players some of Silvery Moon's finest. He'll take any questions they've got, but he doesn't really have many answers to them. However, he will offer them a toast. To stopping the rampage of the giants. 
And when they drink from it, everyone feels like they're being pulled out of the room and they begin to see blurred colors fly by as they are suddenly hurled and hurtled through space and it ends with them hitting the ground with a thud on some cold dark stone pedestal. They look out to find themselves face to face with a guard of Moon Gleam Tower wearing whatever design you so choose for them to be wearing or if you've actually researched this shit, I don't know. Good on you, I guess. Who greets them and opens the door behind them. Now, the inside of this place needs to be weird, needs to be evocative, okay? So the guard brings them into what seems to be a spiraling staircase that feels endless as they walk and talk. Around the staircase is a huge cabinet that just rises up, surrounding them completely, almost as if it is the wall of the keep. These cabinets are about 30 feet away, so you're gonna have to fly towards them if you want to get there. And coincidentally, you can see guards floating around, picking up items and the sort. If your players ask to see what kinds of items there are in these cabinets, you can allow them to roll and then you can just rattle off like uh, potions of healing, uh, abacus, uh, jars, vials, you know, general store stuff. The guard, as they are walking down, would mention how the archmage is currently asleep right now, if it's at night. If it's not, then just go ahead. But if it is, if, if it is at night, then Crowan would probably be asleep and uh, promptly shows them towards a room which is furnished and has enough bed beds for many travelers. Stay here the night, rest up and you'll see him when he wakes at dawn, is what he says to the players. That's when he closes the door and walks away. If your players want to walk around the tower, let them. The Harpers aren't hostile to anyone that is already inside their base. However, they won't be selling them anything until one or more of their group actually joins them. The place should be filled with cats that have wings, by the way. Tressens. When dawn comes, a guard takes them towards the office of Crowan Valhara, the old human who has seen many a calamity in his time. As they open the door and walk and Crowan stands up from behind his mahogany desk and greets the party warmly after noting that Darathra sent them. He asks what tidings they bring. Any information they have that can help them face the giant threat is welcome. Now, I've played Crowan as a kind of like a Dumbledore from the first Harry Potter movie. As his demeanor is calm and he wouldn't get irritated quickly, it puts the players at ease. So have him talking softly in a very endearing tone and calm voice and you'll have the players on his side in no time. After divulging any information they have, Crowan gives them all pins that resemble a harp. And with it he says, keep these on you at all times. Keep them hidden and out of sight of the common. I would like to welcome you into the Harper's Network. And with that comes a set of very useful privileges. So long as you don't abuse our name and commit criminal acts on our grounds, you shall be free to use our services however you need. And thus, he grants them access to their stores, which the Harpers can obtain anything listed in the adventuring gear section of the PHP, weapons, items, mounts, potions, even the old thieves tools. And along with that, he allows them to use the Harpers teleportation network as well, which can send the players into any of the places that are mentioned in the adventure book. You can take the picture that the adventure book gives you and give it to the players as a visual uh, key that represents which cities they can visit. Of course, this will open up a lot of doors for you, but you'll be able to roll. If players have family in other different cities, they can go there and visit and come back and try to move along with the story, <laughs> with the story sometime after that, I guess. And with this, Crowan now tells the players of any quests they currently have. Stopping some rampaging frost giants, following a fire giant who seems to be heading into the moon woods, dragging a huge pile, or not pile, sorry, a huge white and gold item behind it, which would be a part of the Vonendal. You know, side quests that can give your players some small goals to try to do. And last but not least, he tells them the final place they've seen Harshnag as of late is above Zymorvin Hall, heading north. It would be extremely fruitful if the players can find him and get his help in ending the conflict. This will light a fire under the players and they will get to moving towards Zymorvin Hall, passing by Silvery Moon where they can get their fill of shopping for magic items and finally get the giant's bay. Maybe even stop a fire giant from getting a piece of the Von and Dodd back to the Duke. Anything can happen from here. But with this session over and done, your players will have a goal in mind and a somewhat clear destination. Completing a quest for some rewards maybe. Getting to Zymorvin and then heading directly north to find Harshnag and attempt to ally with him. With that said and done, please crit that like button, send this video to any who would need it and subscribe. This has been Gamma Rays. Over and out.